So we're here at our favorite Alaska State Park campground called Deep Creek Recreation Area. So I guess this is the official first overlanding video in our home state of Alaska for you guys. And the beaches on the western side of the Kenai Peninsula are an overlander's playground. So there is an element of danger with this uh, experience because it's on the shores of Cook Inlet, which uh, due to its geographic location has some of the largest tidal swings in the world. And if things go wrong, this rig could literally be from the roof, have 10 feet of water over it within a six hour time period. This is something kind of unique to Alaska. They actually have a boat launch here where they use those tractors and drop the boats onto the beach and into the water. This beach is pretty amazing. We used to come clam digging here, uh, but now clam digging, ooh, there's a big hole. Uh, now clam digging is uh, only allowed on the other side of Cook Inlet, but we used to scoot around these beaches with our ATV and have a blast. But now we can do it in our RV. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's bumpy. A little. Oh my. Oh, I don't think we should do that. No. That's, that's way not, too steep. That's not prudent. All right, well, first lesson of the day, don't break your rig or take unnecessary risks before you even hit the beach. Seriously, uh, you gotta look at the bigger picture, and I know this truck is uh, bad enough that it could have easily done that with the approach and departure angles. Fortunately, there are plenty of options to get onto the beach. Like this one. Right here. Boom. And we're on. Uh-huh. Going where most motorhomes cannot go. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. I love this. This is awesome. I, I think this will always bring a smile to my face. I don't think we'd call this extreme off-roading, but there's still plenty of hazards out here. Either way, I think we're going to find some fun today. down anytime you hit the sand in this piece. It's a heavy truck. But it always, you know, if you don't get yourself stuck, and it does pull itself out. guys uh, if you don't want to stay in like the established campgrounds uh, there are a few spots along the bluffs that are actually uh, above the high tide mark where you can camp for free and you know you can't beat free and then you're all by yourself we've always loved to come and do bonfires in this area just a little south of the Nemilchik village no reason you can't come and camp here if your truck will get you here so there's no reason you can't just stay on the uh, beach, but the object of the video is to show you things. So we're gonna head up here into the village, which requires going through a little bit of a gravel patch. 
This is the village of Ninilchik. Right above us on the hill is a Russian Orthodox church. And uh, the village is kind of broken up into two parts. So this is the village down by the harbor. And then up on the hill is a little bit more of the modern development along the Sterling Highway. There's many cool things about this area, but it is literally littered with bald eagles. And it's something we definitely take for granted here in Alaska. So this little stretch of road uh, heading north through the Ninilchik village takes us along the harbor. And as you can see, there's not much water for those boats. Uh, and it just is a direct reflection on how much water movement comes in on these tides because the boats have no problem getting in and out when the tide is high. But once they're in, they're in until the tide comes back. But there's a, a very strong uh, commercial fishing presence in Alaska for obvious reasons and uh, a lot of really fascinating stories and uh, families that have been just you know, homesteading and doing it for generations upon generations. Well now it's time to get back to the beach right here north of the Ninilchik River and it is just a fascinating area down here. Some of this gravel, we got it, no problem at all. First gear is definitely granny. All right, second gear, and we are off. So, speaking of uh, commercial fishing history, you'll see these lines heading on out into Cook Inlet. This is a uh, set net fishery for sockeye salmon. So literally, at the end of those nets, or at the end of those lines, way out there, our nets and the gill nets and the sockeye swim into them and then every day high tide they come in and work the nets seriously there's so much fascinating and uh, unique lifestyle here in alaska i'm always just happy and excited to share it with you guys here's a little bit better of a look you can see the buoys attached to those set nets out into the inlet and how far out they go well, this is as far as we are driving on the beach in this section today. Uh, and it's also another uh, overlanding lesson or off-roading lesson. Uh, we're by ourselves right now. To the north of us is about 15, 17 miles of beach. Totally drivable beach. But if anything goes wrong, you literally have, okay, well, high tides in about six hours and 15 minutes. So depending on where you are, that clock ticks and that ticks hard. We're gonna use good judgment, but we're gonna show you uh, how far up you can go if you're with friends. And it's a totally safe adventure if you plan it with the tides and you're not alone. Cause I'm not about to put this beautiful, awesome expedition vehicle uh, in danger by going 15 miles down the beach there. Um, I have had a certain level of comfort being right here because I know there's civilization right there. Uh, there's tractors at Deep Creek for the boat launch. You know, somebody could help us out. And we're also making sure time is on our side because like I said, it's six hours and 15 minutes or so to high tide. We're not gonna mess around and get all down low there. Big picture guys. As tempting as it is to keep going down the beach because it's beautiful and it feels really easy right now, we have said this for years, Alaska is not to be messed with. She will eat you up and spit you out if you're not really careful and very well prepared. It's just not worth it. We've learned our lessons maybe one too many times. So we hopped on the uh, Sterling Highway and came northbound about 15, 17 miles, just so we can show you the Clam Gulch area. This is one of the, uh, it pretty much, aside from maybe a fish camp, would be the next spot where you could get back up to the road if you're uh, heading up the beach. So if you guys ever wanna hook up with us for an overlanding type adventure, just message us because it truly is painful sometimes not being able to do these things when we have the vehicle capable of doing these things, but prudent decision-making says don't do it. I often really think that I was a lot more fun when I was younger because I was a little more reckless. Now I'm old, damn. 
The reckless teenager in him still lives though because last night he made me promise that I wouldn't let him drive that stretch of road. He was afraid he was gonna talk, or not road, but beach. He was afraid he was gonna talk himself back into it. And he's like, whatever you do, don't let me drive it tomorrow. I'm just so, so conflicted. Maybe I have to be the voice of reason. Well, we have about five and a half hours until the tide switch, and that's plenty of time to drive on the beach here and get the drone out. What do I believe? What makes me feel it to write you this song? Two hours a day, five months and a year. Oh, I loved you too long. You keep blowing. I'm not gonna lie, we knew this was here and uh, it washed ashore about one month ago, but it's an opportunity to let you know something that's happening in the Pacific Ocean right now. But this is a uh, baby gray whale that has washed ashore here. And they've been washing ashore all up the entire Pacific coast from Baja to here and up into the uh, Bering Sea. I know it's Mother Nature, but it's kind of sad. We feel a special connection since we've actually pet baby gray whales in Mexico to see them having this experience this year. Not sure why, other than they're saying it looks like starvation, but what's causing the starvation? So die-offs in nature are common. They happen. It's just thinning of the uh, herd. Uh, the last gray whale die-off uh, was back in I believe the year 2000 but hundreds of these things have been washing ashore so you can only imagine the amount of them that have not been washing ashore and just going out into the currents out at sea so something serious is going on I just thought it'd be nice to tell you guys and uh, share a real-life experience with you because this is uh, a calf that was uh, born this past winter in Baja. So we re-aired up the tires for that journey up the highway. So we're running at 65 pounds right now, which takes some forethought and a little bit of speed helps, but I'm making sure to stay in our tire tracks because I know we didn't get stuck on the way in and theoretically, if I follow those, we whoo, shouldn't get stuck on the way out. So here to our left, uh, is a perfect example of a fish camp uh, where the people have uh, permits and rights and all that to uh... oh gosh it's getting soft let me get down here okay well hey at least there's a tractor right over there Woo! come on have faith in the fuso honey So we're about 15 minutes north of Sterling on the Sterling Highway. And just before you head up into the hills uh, where Cooper Landing is, there is a wildfire burning over here. It's called the Swan Lake Wildfire. And so much for the clean air that we've been enjoying for the past couple nights. Uh, because all this smoke with the prevailing winds the past week was blowing right at home in Seward. You see little smokes billowing out. The hot spots. Yeah, hot spots all through the valley here. So, oh, and it's really burning on the back of that hillside. Oh yeah. You see that? So this fire started on June fifth, I believe, and it was caused by lightning. Mm -hmm. And the uh, fascinating part is that it's been burning since June fifth, and it's July third now. We have literally had one month without heavy 
significant rainfall. To help which, tamp this down. Yeah, which is seriously unheard of. It's been phenomenal weather, but it has been so smoky and sewered. Uh, and there's literally of the 10 day forecast, there is still no rain in sight. Can you zoom in on that? Oh, let's see. But the gimbal's pretty steady. Um, oh, there's another one. Look at that. Just oh, wow. Coming up. Look at that. Guys, so uh, last time I checked, this fire was at maybe 70,000 acres burned. So it's sizable, not as sizable as other parts of the country, but you gotta think that there's a lot of moisture and swamps out amongst these trees. This fire is definitely putting a damper on tourism on this side of the peninsula. Normally, Cooper Landing is bustling, and it is, yeah, meh, yeah nothing like usual. Oh, no. We noticed a lot less traffic headed down this western side of the peninsula, and um, yeah, I feel, I really feel for these folks with their, this, they rely on their summertime business, so it's definitely going to be a struggle this year. No matter what's going on in the sky, though, the Kenai River is always that beautiful green glacial color. <laughs> the uh, cab of the truck is fairly airtight, but it is not airtight enough to handle the smoke that we're coming through now. Uh, approaching Moose Pass here, man, this is not looking good. You can just barely make out the snow on top of those mountains. I can literally see smoke going across the road. First stop, wow, the diesel's gone down no again joke. here. Shoot. Who's not loving these uh, diesel prices? Low gasoline, it's oh. awesome. Okay, so first stop, here we go again. We'll try this again, the car wash. So you really have to break up the salt from being out on the beach with some soap. Not good enough just to rinse things off. So when we finished playing on the beach, we always come and wash this thing down so that it lasts. We don't want to have a big rust bucket on our hands. All right, finding our way down into the campground. Looks like the tide's high tonight. There are a lot of people here, although I will say, I fully expect there to be a lot more before this show is over. It Hi. is total chaos here. People are holding campsites. Yep. So our friends came over for dinner the other night and they're staying here. They said there have been people holding, you know, like paying for campsites for the last two weeks so they could have this weekend here. Hmm. Stealth camps. Ghost camps, huh? Exactly. Oh yeah, ghost camps. That's yeah. Uh, fireworks are tonight at midnight. Doubt I'm gonna be awake for that one. We never are. We went one year on the boat. That yeah. was fun. This is a nice campground with its proximity to the water, which you really can't see too well right now. Waterfront campsites here. Um, so your fire pit is actually on the other side of the little walkway, so you can be right on the ocean. And that right there is the mountain that people will run tomorrow, Mount Marathon. I think that concludes our tour of the camping areas of Seward, at least down by the waterfront. There are people camped everywhere here, down Exit Glacier Road, on the other side of the bay. If it will tolerate a campsite, they use it. <laughs> so, hey, thanks for riding with us. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already uh, because there are more Alaska overlanding adventures coming and you know we want to go overlanding with friends so if you have the uh, availability and you want to hit some trails and adventures with us that are best suited for you know more than one vehicle to go on for safety reasons hit us up and let's see if we can put a trip together thanks for riding with us we'll see you in the next one Oh.